I think the last thing to do is to recreate my crash caused by the foot plates on this hill. So I'll just head up there now. We'll get to that test later. But from what I can tell, the Veteran Sherman S has five foot plate options. And surprisingly, buying aftermarket pedals isn't required. What's up everyone? I'm Jono and I didn't really throw away those stock foot plates with some modifications and, and some modifications to my flat boots. It becomes a viable option. But why should you compromise on the thing that's most integral for controlling your EUC safely? What's the big deal with the stock foot plates anyway? Are they really that bad? Well, I've been riding for about nine months now and 7,000 kilometers. There we have it, my first crash coming down this hill and then and I was doing a hard brake, leaning back and my feet slipped out on the foot plates. Uh, this is the only significant crash I've had in that time and it was caused by these foot plates. I simply slid off them under hard braking. Yes, you could say it's user error since it was known issue by other reviewers at the time and I knew it as well. I simply didn't realise how awful the grip was. However, for a top of the line flagship EUC, it's not an acceptable design. There are several terrible design choices working in unison here. These are the rounded studs, which are recessed below the lip running around the perimeter of the foot plate. This means that barely any of the stud extends beyond the ridge to grip into your shoe. To make things worse, the set screws that lock in the front and back adjustable pieces are even longer and rounded, which is very slippery. This combination gives zero grip confidence for me. Additional points of failure are the screws. They don't actually hold the adjustable pieces and in an attempt to tighten it enough to stop, I stripped one already. Another issue is that the pins for the sliders were rusty out of the box. It's worth noting that some Sherman S owners have reported good grip with specific deep treaded hiking boots. However, I use a heavier duty motorcycle boot with ankle support and unfortunately they are flat and paired with these foot plates give terrible traction. While one option is to buy different boots, I figured rather than throwing these away, I might as well try to make them grippier and viable. I did this by cutting my own tread pattern into them, using a drill press for the bulk of the interior. I then went around the edges and the middle with a Dremel to cut grooves into it, the rubber. The idea is that this tread pattern will improve the mechanical grip that the studs can achieve. While I did create significant tread, the stock foot plates were still very slippery so I moved on to stage two, which was to modify them. My first action was to cut a notch for the set screws to lock in the end adjustable pieces. This is pretty easy and it worked perfectly. I next tried as a stopgap measure, adding grip tape to the ridges around the perimeter. This barely worked and there wasn't enough surface area to make a difference. It was time to stop holding back and really get stuck into them. I took an angle grinder and cut teeth around the entire perimeter. I also cut off entire rear ridge instead of doubling up the teeth here. This made a massive difference to the grip. However, I think I could have ground even more down and created even sharper teeth. So I've just finished the street tire video and I've been using the modified foot plates um, for this ride and got the uh, grub screws in, which is my final modification. Good test and honestly, it's gripping pretty well. Uh, I've done a lot of mods, so as you've seen, so it should, but not bad now. Yeah, but the nylon over is still going on for all the reasons stated. It has several downsides, one being the structural integrity is slightly compromised, although there is still a fair bit of metal on these foot plates. The other is that they're very sharp on the edges now 
And the worst part was this dust caused by the angle grinder is quite horrible to be exposed to and it got everywhere. And all of these factors working together with my improved boot tread gave a massive increase to the grip and actually made these foot plates viable for me. Many of these modifications came from the EUC community group chat. So thanks for everyone for sharing your ideas and coming up with good solutions. So Ronnie Coe's using the same boots as me and ended up changing to a hiking boot and has reported good grip with the stock pedals. Let's check out the aftermarket options and compare and contrast the three against the stock pedals. Here is a comparison between the pedal sizes with a size 10 US boot. I'm trying something a bit different here by incorporating 3D into the comparison, so let me know in the comments if you like it or not. A final word on the E-Rides pedals. I got this testimonial from Darren Boone and he said that there's a hidden set screw to look out for when installing and he stuffed his doing this. Also he mentioned that the ratchet system that holds the pedals up doesn't work after some time and it just flops down. But overall, he's happy with the grip with his size 10.5 shoes. Let's finally get back to the results of my crash reenactment that was caused by the foot plates. Now, after all the modifications and the upgrades, let's see if we get a different result. So this is the spot right here. Um, and there was a car pulling out about two or three spots down that way. You can't really tell, but it is a bit of a slope here. So. With the nylon over and the boot mods, it should grip just fine and I'll be able to pull up no problem. There you go, test complete. These are the nylon o foot plates. The grip, comfort and adjustability has been excellent. I also think they look pretty great as well, which is a bonus. So why did I switch out to the Nylono foot plates? Well, they are angle adjustable, the studs are length adjustable, the pedal edges aren't so sharp as the cut you, and one of the best features is that there's a slight flex to them, which reduces foot fatigue and allows for longer, more comfortable riding. Now the best part is the adjustability, and the studs can be screwed in and out to your liking. They came way too close in for me, so I took them out to around 4 millimeters. There are a few options, but I got the non-bite system with the overlays. And the overlays are these red pieces on the ends that give a small rise to the heel and toe. I felt a bit strange at first, but I quite like it now. Although my foot is so far forward that I don't use the rear overlay at all. It's worth noting that if you want to remove the overlays, they use different screw lengths. And so I was unable to take them off and test since I didn't have the shorter screws. And if you're like me, I was a bit apprehensive about the strength. But I can reassure you after my long use with them on the Inmotion V11, they've held up just fine although the max weight capacity is recommended at 100 kilograms. 
So that's nice and everything, but what is it actually like to ride with the Nylon O foot plates? Well, after a short period of getting used to the overlays on my heel and toe, I finally have confidence in my grip. And that just allows me to ride so much more effortlessly. And I kind of just forget about my feet now, which is what you want. Uh, that's actually a good thing. And I can just drop anchor and throw the brake on without fear of my feet slipping out. And then that also confidence leads into nice cornering as well and acceleration and of course bumps and also rain riding um, so those are all the conditions you really want to have like this bump here when you want to have good confidence in your feet and your grip oh i also found that my feet migrate backwards a little bit as i'm riding i think that's from constant sitting and standing it just pushes them back a bit. So I had someone reach out to me saying they'd stuff their null and no foot plate installation, which is just sad to hear, it might knock them out of riding for a bit. And uh, that's why I made a quick installation guide and that's coming up now, so enjoy. Firstly, take out the two set screws on the back of the stock foot plates and the four screws on the ratchet base. A spanner might be needed to loosen the nut on the ratchet system. Use the included punch that came with the nylon over to push through the rods all the way. I used the first rod that fell out to help push through the last one. The nylon over pedals need a 4 and 2.5mm Allen key. And be aware that only one side has a threaded rod and the other is just a rod with a set screw. So it's directional which way you put them. I put the threaded rod at the rear. Start threading in the threaded rod. To be safe, loosen the set screw. And then place in the top rod very gently, hammer it in while wiggling the pedals. The floppiness can be controlled by how tight the threaded rod is. So tighten it up until the movement just starts to bind and then ease it back a tiny bit. Tighten the set screw for the top rod. Be sure not to use Loctite. Don't forget to set the angle adjust to your liking, making sure both floating, floating feet are even and adjust out the studs to your liking. Boom, installation done. One of my favourite features is a slight springiness which improves foot comfort and allows for longer rides. I've been speaking with John about this and we both agree that there isn't as much spring as previous nylon no foot plates. This is a bit of a shame and a touch disappointing. I think it is due to using a double pin connection to the hanger and also being slightly thicker than what my InMotion V11 foot plate is. Now, the downsides are pretty obvious. Uh, these are incredibly expensive to ship to Australia at 451 Australian dollars. And they can often be sold out with long wait times. So as you can see, the stock foot plates with some modifications grip really well, or if you have a deep treaded hiking boot. But we are spoiled for choice with other options from the Leapercum CNC, foot plates, E-rides, aluminium foot plates, and then of course my pick, which is the Nylonove, for all the reasons that I listed earlier. Now this is part three of my Leapercum Veteran Chairman S review series, so keep an eye out for the main review coming later. Cheers everyone, ride safe, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.